When I slammed into the kitchen, Erica wasn't there. I called out, just in case, but there's something about an empty house. You always know when you're alone. I pictured her taking her time coming home, sulking, mad, hoping I'd worry about her. Little brat. I couldn't stand my sister anymore. I was sick of her. Sick of her scenes, sick of the doll. I hope we'd never find it. I smeared a thick layer of peanut butter on a piece of bread, poured myself a glass of cider, and went to my room to play games on my iPad. But for some reason, I couldn't concentrate. The silence of the house pressed in against my ears. A clock ticked. The refrigerator turned on and off. A gust of wind rattled the window panes. Noises you never heard except for when there were no other noises. I closed my iPad and went to the window. Where was Erica? I walked down the hall to her room. Maybe she'd been hiding there all the time, playing a trick on me. Yes, that must be it. She'd beaten me home, ran upstairs, and hidden. It was just the sort of prank she'd pull. Fully expecting to see her sitting on her bed, laughing at me, I flung open the door and flicked on the light. A row of stuffed animals sat on the window seat, staring at me with shiny brown eyes. I called my sister's name. I looked under her bed and in the closet, expecting her to jump out and scare me. No, Erica. As I turned to leave the room, I saw the van's headlights coming down the driveway. With a half-formed hope that Erica would be with Mom and Dad, I ran down the back stairs to the kitchen and opened the door before Dad had a chance to fumble with his key. Well, thanks, buddy. Dad brushed past me and set a case of wine down on the counter with a thud. Mom was right about him, balancing a stack... I'm sorry, Mom was behind him, balancing a stack of carry-out cartons from Lucky's Chinese Restaurant. No pizza tonight. Mugu got pan for you and me and Erica. And General says chicken for me. Dad turned to the cupboard to get dinner plates. Go fetch Erica so we can eat before the wonton soup gets cold. Why are you just standing there? Mom asked. What's wrong? Where's Erica? She... I took a deep breath, then started again. She's not... She's... She's not... Mom left the kitchen. Erica, she called. Erica? Dad grabbed my shoulders and spun me around to face him. What's going on, Daniel? Where's your sister? She's not here, Dad. I don't I don't know where she is. We had a fight. She wouldn't come home with me. She, she ran off. She ran off? Dad stared at me. Why didn't you go after her? How could you let her run off? I tried to stop her, Dad, but she was mad just like yesterday, and I... His eyes lit on the jar of peanut butter and the lo loaf of bread I'd forgotten to put away. You came home and ate a sandwich? Is that what you did? I thought she'd be here any minute. I never imagined she'd do something like this. Mom reappeared. She's not in the house, Ted. Dad grabbed my shoulders again, harder this time. Where did you last see her? In the clearing. We were looking for the doll, but she wasn't there, and Erica wouldn't come with me. She got mad. She said it was all my fault, and then she ran away from me, and I got mad at her and came home. Dad swore softly. Martha, you stay here just in case she comes back. Daniel, grab your jacket and a couple of flashlights. I followed Dad out into the cold, dark night. The wind was blowing harder now, and the trees sent wild, rocking shadows against the driveway. In the woods, Dad began calling Erica. I joined in. Erica! 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 Her name bounced from tree to tree, caught by the wind, tossed into the sky. But she didn't answer. She didn't come. Where are you? Dad called. His voice scraped raw from shouting. Are you? Are you? Are you? The trees repeated. Creatures in the underbrush rustled. An owl screeched. Our voices sounded small in the noisy darkness. Darkness. We called her name again and again. We waved our flashlights and hoped that she'd see their bobbing light. We were hoarse from calling and desperate when she didn't answer. The faint trail gave out and we began circling back to the house without realizing it until we saw the lights in the windows. We need to call the police, Dad said. We don't know the land the way they do. We'll get lost ourselves if we keep going. Wordlessly, we made our way home. Mom was on the front porch, shivering in, the, in her warmest down coat. You didn't find her? No. Dad stopped to hug her. Mom clung to him. They stood there whispering to each other as if they'd forgotten about me. I waited, shifting my weight from one frozen foot to the other, afraid bloody bones might be watching us from the trees. Not that I believe he actually existed, not in my world, the real world, the five senses world, but with the wind blowing and the moon sailing in and out of clouds, like a ghost racing across the sky, I could almost believe I'd crossed a border into another world, where anything could be true, even conjure women and spells and monsters. The police came sooner than we had expected. We heard their sirens and saw their flashing lights before they'd even ever turned even turned into the driveway. Four cars and an ambulance stopped at the side of the house. Doors opened, men got out. A couple of them had dogs, big German shepherds who pulled on their leashes, excited. Flashing lights waved from the living washed the living room walls with red and blue. Why did they bring an ambulance? 
Mom clung to Dad, her face a strange, ashen color. He frowned at the scene outside. It's standard procedure when something like this happens. Something like what? I wondered. No one was hurt. We didn't need an ambulance. Unless they thought, but no, Erica wasn't hurt. She was just lost. They'd find her fast with those dogs. I'd tell her I was sorry I got mad at her. I was scared, that was all. Scared of what? An old folktale? I shivered as a draft of cold air came creeping into the house. At my age, how could I be scared of a boogeyman? Two policemen came inside and went upstairs. I heard their shoes clunking overhead. A policewoman sat down with us at the dining room table. She had questions. Erica's full name and age, a description of her and the clothes she was wearing, and the circumstances of her disappearance. Daniel was supposed to walk home from, school bus from the school bus stop with Erica, Mom said in a shaky voice, but they had a fight and... and she faltered and tried to pr brush away her tears. The detective turned to me. What was the fight about? She'd been jotting things down in a little notebook and now she sat looking at me, waiting, her pen poised. She had stubby fingers and close cut fingernail po fingernails, no polish, no makeup either, a plain face, short hair, not very friendly, small, hard eyes. The name on her badge said Detective Irma Shank. I told her what I told Dad, still leaving out any mention of the things in the woods or Celine Estes. My hand shook and one leg jiggled about my being without my being able to stop it. So he came home and ate a peanut butter sandwich, Mom said when I finished. Then I imagined he went upstairs to play a game on his iPad. When we came home, he panicked and told us what happened. While Mom talked, Detective Shank watched me, still jotting things down. Is that what you did, Daniel? Yes, but I thought Erica was playing a trick on me. She does things like that. She looked at Dad and Mom and they nodded. Sometimes Erica is very willful. 